Hello, hello, and welcome to a little video about comparing data sets. When comparing data sets, we are going to be using the measures of center that we've been learning about, so the mean and the median. When we have a mean that is larger than the median, we are skewed to the right. This means that the mean is on the right side of the median. When um, your data looks like it's leaning to the left, it's actually skewed right. And when we have a skew to the right, we always use the median as our answer um, for the best measure of center. Similarly, when we're skewed left, we will also use the median. Now, when we're skewed left, the mean is on the left of the median, which means the mean is smaller than the median. Right? So there's a big difference between them, even um, whether they're skewed left or right. All right? So either it's much smaller or much larger. When your data set leans to the right, it's skewed left. So the skew direction depends on where the mean is in relation to the median. Um, the way I like to remember it is if the data is leaning one way, it's skewed the other way. So skewed right leans left, skewed left leans right. Um, the other situation that we can have is a symmetric set of data. When we, use, when we have a symmetric set of data, we use the mean. And we do this because that's our average. And that makes the most sense to use. Um, when the median and mean are like l one or less away, we might as well use the mean because the average represents the data better than um, the middle would. Uh, as opposed to the skews, where if you take a look where the median exists, it's kind of at that hill um, where the mean exists in the symmetric um, graph. I wish you could see me pointing at it. Anyways, um, let's figure out the best measure of center for this data set. So it's in order, which is wonderful. So let's calculate the mean. I'm using my calculator, and I calculated the mean, and I got 56.29. Now let's find the median, 58. So our median is 58. Those are more than one away, so we are going to use the median. Okay. Let's do the same thing for this set of data. Beautiful, it's in order. Um, I'm going to enter this in my calculator, right? Menu 633, control parentheses, and I used commas, clicked enter. Um, I got the mean of 39, and um, let's find the median. 42. Those are quite different again. Um, they're more than one away. I would say this is skewed again. We're going to use the median. All right. Oh, number three. Calculate the mean of the following data set. What does the mean represent? Remove a number that doesn't belong. What's the new mean? Does it represent the data better? Okay. Well, let's see. What I'm going to do is in my calculator, I'm going to do 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 because there's five ones. And then I'll add 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. And then plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, 4, 4, and 7. So the first mean that I get, so mean 1. Um, when I added up the numbers, I got 45. I'm going to count up all the dots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Looks like there's 19 of them, right? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, good, 19. Uh, I had to double check myself. I don't know why I doubt it. Anyways, um, I got a mean of 2.3. I mean, I would say it represents the data. I'm going to draw the little skew or the hump over it. 2.3 would be right here-ish, and... Um, that's pretty close to where that top of the hill is, so I would say it represents the data decently. Now, um, let's remove a number that doesn't belong. What looks to me that it doesn't belong is this 7, right? It's all the way out here. Everything else is clustered together on the left side. Let's calculate mean number 2. I'm going to add all those numbers, and I get 38. And I'm going to divide by 18, because that's all I have. I only have 18 numbers. When I do that, I get 2.1, which is even closer to that top of the hill. 
So, this new mean does represent the data a bit better. So, by getting rid of something that doesn't belong, even though our mean changed by 0.2, it did get closer to representing our data. So, that's something that we need to think about. A number that doesn't belong can really mess up our mean. Imagine if we had a number even bigger than 7, how much it would m mess up our data. All right, outliers. That's what it is. It's called an outlier. An outlier is a number uh, that is too big or too small for the data set. Safe to say, just doesn't belong. Now, sometimes you can look at a data set and understand immediately where the outlier is, if there is an outlier. Sometimes you can't tell. So uh, we do have a special process for it. We have a lower and upper fence. So there's a nice little um, formula there. And um, what we do is we calculate the IQR. We uh, calculate Q1 and Q3. Obviously, we need that for IQR. We plug them into these formulas. Now, for the lower fence, it's said that we cannot get a number lower than that. If there's a number lower than that on our list, then um, that number is the outlier. If we do the upper fence, then we have to have numbers bigger than that number to be an outlier. So let's do that for number three. I think it's kind of obvious for number three where the outlier is, but let's do the calculation. Let's, I think it's obvious that it's 56, but let's prove that it's 56, okay? So first we need to find Q1 and Q3. So I'm going to find the median, cool, and then Q1 is 15, Q3 is 18. Right. Q1, Q3. And then our IQR is, oh, I don't want to write that there. Let's move, let's use the power of uh, technology. There we go. IQR is going to be Q3, whoops, minus Q1. So our IQR is 3. All right, let's do our lower fence, LF for lower fence. Lower fence is going to be Q1 minus our IQR times one and a half, which means we have 15 minus 3 times 1.5. Plop that all into your calculator, you get 10 and a half. Do we have any numbers less than 10 and a half? No. Okay? We don't have any outliers on the lower end. Let's do the upper fence. The upper fence is Q3 plus our IQR times one and a half. So let's fill that out. Q3 is 18 plus our IQR is three. Oh, there we go, three times 1.5. That all goes into your calculator and we get 22.5. Do we have a number larger than 22.5? We sure do. It's 56. So in this case, 56 is our outlier. And again, this was obvious. It's not always going to be obvious. All right. Number four, we need to reorganize this data. I'm going to organize it smallest to largest. I think in this data set, it is also a little obvious. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's find the median, because that's what we need. Oh, it's right here. Okay, we don't actually need to find the median, because we don't... Uh, we just need to find where the median was. Okay, let's find Q1. Oh, you may have heard the bell in the background. I don't know if the computer picked that up. And Q3. Which means our IQR is um, 193 minus 151. So our IQR is going to be 42. All right, let's do lower fence. 
lower fence is Q1 minus our IQR times one and a half. All right, so that means 151 minus 42 times 1.5. And put that all into your calculator, we get 88. Do we have a number smaller than 88? We sure do, it's 22. So we do have a number that's too small for our data set. Now let's do the upper fence. We're going to do Q3 plus our IQR times 1.5, which is 193 minus 42 times 1.5, put that into your calculator, 256. Do we have any numbers that are larger than 256? Absolutely not. So we're done with that problem. Okay, number five. Once again, we've got to organize this data in order to do anything with it. So here we go. Uh-oh. Will I run out of room? Uh-oh. That's okay. You know what? I'm... Oh, wait. I think I could fit the last number in. 295. Okay. Beautiful. First, I want to find the uh, median. So I'm going to cross things off. Oh, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. Ah. 239. Fantastic. So let's find Q1, there's Q1, so that means Q3 is here. Our IQR is going to be one, uh, 257 minus 181, which is 76. Now in this one, it's not that obvious to me what is the outlier, right? They're all kind of closest to each other, so we I can't guess here. This is this is the type of problem where we really do need to do um, the upper and lower fence. So let's do it. Lower fence. Lower fence is going to be Q1, so 181 minus. Our IQR, which is 76, times 1.5. That all goes into your calculator, and we get 67. There are no numbers smaller than 67, so there's no outliers on the smaller end. All right, let's do the upper fence. The upper fence is Q3, so 257, plus our IQR, which is 76, times 1.5. I put that all into my calculator and I got 371. Do we have any numbers larger than 371? No. So actually, there were no outliers at all. All right. And let's continue to our last few problems. So we've talked about choosing the appropriate measure of center. So we picked mean or median, right? So if we picked the median, um, it was because our data was skewed and we pick the mean if we had symmetric data, as we talked about just recently. Now, when we talk about measure of spread, that also has to do with the mean and median. Now, we have our IQR for the skew. So if a data is skewed, we pick the best measure of spread to be IQR. Well, the IQR is all about the median because it's about the first and third quartile, which is the five number summary, which is all about medians. Now, for symmetric data, we pick the best measure of center to be mean, and we pick standard deviation to be um, the... Oh, sorry if you heard that bell again. <laughs> we pick standard deviation. We pick standard deviation to be the best measure of spread because our standard deviation is very closely related to the mean. It's how far away are we from the mean, okay? So that's what the standard deviation um, calculates. IQR is about the medians, Standard deviation is about the means. So here are two classes. Let's compare them and decide 
what are we going to use? Are we going to use the IQR or standard deviation? So what we need to do is decide if class A and class B are skewed or symmetric. All right, so I'm going to cut it in half. This is going to be class the side for class A, side for class B. All right, first I'm going to find it, the median. Uh, sorry, the mean. I'm entering this into my calculator um, with the menu option. So our mean uh, is going to be 8 point... Oh, that's such an ugly 8. Let's try you again, honey. 8.38. Cool. And since I have my calculator out anyways, I'm going to calculate class B. So I'm going to put that in, and I get 5.88. All right. Cool. Now I'm going to find the median, and I'm just going to do that by hand. Do -do -do -do. 8 for class A. And for class B, it's 6. Ooh. These are both so, um, did I do the mean? Did I do the right? Oh yeah, I did do it right. They are so close. That's crazy, right? They're only point, uh, uh, class A is only point 38 away, and um, class B is, ooh, point 22 away. That's very close. That is very, very close. So I would say that this, both sets of data, are symmetric. So, sim, sim, sim for symmetric, because they're, they're less than one away from each other. Okay, if we're symmetric, we use the mean for center, and let's check what we use. For spread, standard deviation. And stand div <laughs> um, for spread because the classes are both symmetric. All right. And that is it for this unit. Oh my God, you did it. Unit one, all done. Um, have a wonderful rest of your day. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. All right. Have a good, I already said that. Oh, my brain today. Anyways, happy, happy whatever day it is for you. I'm going to go and relax now. Bye.